Good morning, everybody. And welcome to the first Sunday of Advent, and we're having communion this morning. We already have the prayer list up here, so please take your bulletins home with you after the service to review the announcements. I'll mention a few. Uh, if you have not completed a communion card for 2023, please do so. The cards are in the holders on the back of each pew. Please fill it in and drop it in the offering plate. Each member only needs to complete one communion card per year. As you look around, you can see how beautifully the church has been decorated. We want to thank everyone who took part in decorating the church. It looks beautiful. Today we will have the congregational meeting towards the end of the service to approve the 2024 operating and capital budgets and hold the election of council members. Today is the last day to order poinsettias for the sanctuary. The order forms are on the table in the narthex at the sanctuary entrance. Be sure to be here next Sunday, December 10th, when the children will share their Christmas program, Christ the King of Christmas, during the 1030 worship service. Invite family and friends to enjoy this lively program. We will have light refreshments after the service, and if you can help with setup and cleanup, or provide some desserts and snacks, contact Tess Wolosansky. Where's Tess? Oh, see Tess, the woman coming in. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's coming in now. <laughs> so see Tess. Today after the children's message, the children in the Christmas program will go downstairs for a special rehearsal. If families would like their child to be here for communion, please come downstairs during the hymn after the sermon to pick up your child so they can be in the sanctuary for communion. Otherwise, the children will rehearse until the end of the service. Notice the times in your bulletin of the Christmas Eve service schedule and other special services in December and January. Also this Thursday, December 7th, Friend Incorporated Food Pantry Truck Distribution will be in the Huff Church parking lot from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. If you can help to carry items from the food truck to the vehicles, Tom Mitchell's contact in info is in the bulletin. Tom's sitting right there with his hand in the air. Then we'll begin our service, and I invite you to stand as you are able by the, for the ringing of the bell and responsive reading of the call to worship and invocation in your bulletins. Oh, that God would tear open the heavens and come down. Of that day or hour, no one knows, only God. Be alert, keep awake, the time is drawing near. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God of power unexpected, we want you to tear open the heavens and come down, to make mountains quake, water boil, and stars to fall until all nations tremble at your presence. But you will not perform according to our wants and whims. Instead, you come like the sound of sheer silence. Instead, you were born among us as an infant. Instead, you show us how love is made perfect in weakness. So we will stay alert, or at least we will try, because we are your people and there is no other God besides you. Amen. We'll continue by singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, hymn number 34, and it's found in the green hymnal.
Please be seated. We'll continue with the lighting of the Advent wreath by Scott and Emily Swackhammer. And after we light the candle on the Advent wreath, we'll sing the Advent hymn, Light One Candle. The words are in your bulletin. And Mrs. Adams will play through the song one time, and then we'll sing this week's verse about the candle of hope. Today is the beginning of Advent, the preparation time for celebrating Christ's birth. We are here because God's promises to our ancestors came true when Jesus was born. God's promise is kept each Sunday when we worship because Christ is in our midst. God will keep the promise to come again in glory. About 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah wrote in chapter 60, verse 2, For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness cover the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is hope. Because of Christ, we not only have hope, but we believe that good is stronger than evil. God wants us to work for good in this world. God, we thank you that Jesus brought hope into our world. By the good news of the Bible, you are still bringing hope to people. Help us to be ready to welcome Jesus Christ so that we may think good thoughts and do good deeds so that we may be a people of hope in the world. Affirm our faith by joining in the responsive reading of the Nicene Creed printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we'll continue with the children's message. Good morning. So we're going to do a little reading from actually two books. Both very important books. One's going, we're going to start with Dr. Seuss, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Have you heard of that before? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to read from that. And in this little reading, he talks about a place called The Waiting Place. 
And he describes it as a useless place where people are just waiting. So I'm going to read this little part. Waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. So just like in Oh, the Places You'll Go, in Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37, it also talks about waiting. So I'll read that. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. So we're in a season of waiting right now because it's the first Sunday of Advent. What do you think we're waiting for? What are you all waiting for? Well, Christmas. Yes, we're waiting for Christmas. And what especially are you waiting for for Christmas? What are you all waiting to open? Lainey? Presents. Yes, you're waiting for presents. And is that easy or hard? It's easy to wait. So you can wait another 22 days. <laughs> that's not, that's not, it's early. Twenty-two days. Okay, so I guess it's easy. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of this. Yes, yes, yeah. So, 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 don't wake me up at seven a.m. to wait to open presents, right? Yes, you gotta wait for your parents to get up, and then you have to wait for them to get their coffee, and then you have to wait for them to actually put clothes on, all the things, all the things. Get their cameras out, then we have to take a picture in front of the tree. And that, yes, it takes a very long time. So it's, it's a little bit hard to wait. And waiting for the day that you can open all the gifts and you see under the tree, then open more gifts, it's just a lot of waiting. So what can we do to make this time of waiting more than just a useless time in the waiting place? What are some things we can do? During, during all these days before Christmas, what are other things that we do? Do you have any ideas, Finley? Um, like, like find where our elf is hiding 24-7. Oh, yes, we can look for our elf. What's some other things? What We just decorated the church. What are some things that people do outside that we can look at? Have another one. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> Lights. Lights. We can look at lights. That's another thing we can do. So we can also think about the true meaning of Christmas. We can think about okay. We can think about Jesus and his love. We can think about giving gifts instead of opening and receiving gifts. We can enjoy all the beautiful music and decorations of the season. When we do these things, we find joy, right? It's a happy time, right? But while we're also waiting for Jesus, what, we're also always waiting for something else. We're waiting for Jesus to return. He told us that he will come again, and he also told us to watch and be ready for him. What should we do while we are waiting? What do we do every Sunday? Finley? We can come to church and worship and praise him and love him and serve him and share his love with others. Like, what are we doing next Sunday? Well, yes, we're coming to church. Lainey? Yes, our Christmas program. That's a way that we can share our love of Jesus with other people. When we are doing things, these things, we are ready for his return and we find joy in the waiting place. So it's really not that bad. So let's fold our hands and say a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we spend time in this waiting place, we look forward with great joy to the celebration of Jesus' birth and to the day when he comes again. Amen. We'll continue in the bulletin with a gathering of our offerings with the invitation to give. God has enriched us in every way, in speech, knowledge, and spiritual gifts. From the fellowship of Jesus Christ, we are sent out to share with thanksgiving what we have received.
let us join together in blessing our offerings. Faithful God, we thank you that Christ is being revealed in every time and place until he comes again in the fullness of glory. Strengthen our testimony and spiritual gifts. Increase generosity in us, we pray, as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture this morning is Mark 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was angry. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, will never enter it. And he took the children up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. I was thinking of actually preaching from up there, but the chair was repaired yesterday, so I was definitely going to go sit on it today. <laughs> um, next week, my feet might hurt again. I'll have to sit on it, so it's week by week. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, as a little child, will never enter it. What does it mean to receive the kingdom of God as a little child? There are two points that I especially want to lift up. The openness of the beginner, the novice. And second, the vulnerability of the mortal, the human. Children, especially little children, are experiencing the wonders of the world for the first time. When everything is new, you have an openness. You, you see the world as if you are a novice, which if you're a little child, you are. You're a novice of being a human. Beginner's mind is an expression used in Eastern religions, but which connects to this scripture. Beginner's mind requires letting go of what you think you know, and being open as if you are experiencing something for the first time. Beginner's mind opens us to reflection without prejudice or assumption. When we cultivate a beginner's mind, we approach things with humble not knowing. We take on the openness of the novice. Certainly, Catherine reminds me again and again I should have beginner's mind. Scientific breakthroughs are often the result of being able to approach a problem with the mind of a beginner, the openness of a novice, not having established ways to cloud and get in the way. The scientist then, either by accident or intention, is able to see the problem with new eyes. Once we can see the problem through new eyes, possible solutions emerge that we were unable to even imagine before. Some of these imagined solutions will not work. However, if a new imagined solution does lead to taking care of the problem, a breakthrough takes place and an entire paradigm shifts. There are drawings that look differently based on your perception of what you are seeing. One that's used often is called the duck rabbit drawing. You look one way and you see a duck. You see the eyes and there's this long beak. But if you look the other way, you see the eyes and what you thought was a beak are actually the rabbit's ears. The drawing does not change. It's the same drawing. What changes is our perception. We see it differently. But it's the same thing. 
regardless of which way you're looking at it. When we are able to see beyond our limited perceptions and guarded assumptions, we can experience a breakthrough in understanding. The paradigm through which we see and understand is transformed. We see as if through new eyes. We experience the paradigm shift that happens when we see both the duck and the rabbit in that drawing. Not exactly at the same time, but our eyes can sort of flip back and forth really quickly. Now when I began ministry, as I moved from one interim, intentional interim position to the next, I quickly became aware that I needed to approach each new interim with the mind of a beginner. Yes, I was able to build up my personal knowledge and being a pastor as I would go from church to church. And still, each church was different. It was unique in certain ways. I needed to flip from seeing church reality as a duck here and as a real, seeing it as a rabbit somewhere else, and then back again. I needed to use the bulletin, because one of the churches would say trespasses in the Lord's Prayer, and the other one would say debts, and then the other one would say sins. And if I didn't have this, I didn't know. I would go back to when I was a kid, which was trespasses, by the way. You do it wrong, just letting you know. At least if you grew up in my house. Um, so, I just had to, you, you know, get along with those perceptions. I, I mean, in fact, I actually had two churches that I served at the same time, and one of the churches insists, you serve communion this way at the altar. Everybody would come up. And the other said, no, 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 no. You go this way. <laughs> now, I only did communion once a month, and I would never remember Except I always knew that, of course, whatever way it was in the first one, I just did the opposite in the other one. And I was good in the other, and the other second one was the one that really cared. Now, for example, give an example. Sermons, sermons I give are usually based on uh, a sermon text from the lectionary. Not this week. This is not the lectionary text from this week, but usually. I take the lectionary scripture, and that's what I base the, script, uh, the sermon on. And the lectionary cycle has three years, year A, year B, year C. And then after three years, you go back from the beginning to the beginning of the lectionary cycle. So when you've been doing this for um, almost 30 years, you've gone through that cycle a bunch of times. So, and you're being an interim, so it must be very easy, you know. You did one sermon, and you just take that sermon from church to church. Well, the sermon I preach in a specific context, a specific congregational setting, was really not helpful in another time and place. It just didn't relate. I mean, I have the text, I look at it, it just needs you to start all over. Same text, different setting. There's a need to see the text with new eyes in each context, each preaching event. And this requires the spiritual mindset to approach each text, each time, with the mind of a beginner. To be able to meet Jesus in the Gospel text as if for the first time. Even though you've read that scripture, you've read the commentaries or whatever, before you approach it as if you were meeting Jesus in the text again for the first time. When we are able to approach our spiritual life with the openness and mindset of a beginner, we receive the kingdom of God like a little child. This approach to our spiritual life is done through reading the Bible. Even if you've read that passage before, we open ourselves to the beginner's mind through daily prayer, through Sunday worship, through service, and through our love for each other. Even if we're doing that again and again, we bring in that beginner's mind and we open ourselves as a little child 
to Jesus and to entering the kingdom of God. Now, one major way that all humans are vulnerable is through our mortality. Even if we enjoy great health and vitality today, at some point, our bodies will fail. Having cancer makes this very real to me. Yet, I have access to excellent medical care and really good health insurance. Excellent until I started, I turned 65 and then I had to change some things, but it's still very good. I live in a time that medical advances continue to help us to turn what was once fatal into chronic conditions and chronic ones into cures. I remember going with my father when I was in seminary, this was in the 1980s, and he was visiting somebody, and he did ministry going to people with AIDS and being with them. And in the 1980s, that was terminal. Now it's chronic, if you have all access to the meds, if you have access to the meds, not in the third world. There are treatments for my specific cancer that are available today that didn't exist when I first got kidney cancer in 2006. These treatments are what's keeping me alive and well. And there are treatments to address the side effects I get from taking that medicine. As a middle class American, I have reflected on how my life is actually better and more secure than that of kings throughout history. So many of these kings had power, riches, and died before they reached 45 years of age. I do not lack of basic human needs. My home is not under attack. We have electricity, refrigeration, air conditioning in the summer, running water, both hot and cold. We have the ability to cook food on a stove, an oven, a microwave. We have an abundance of food to eat. I hit some buttons and I can listen to a variety of music, watch football, entertain movies, documentaries, and much more. I take phones and texting and they give me instant contact to relatives who live far away. And the internet provides me with a vast library of knowledge. I can't always find, but it's there. I go to Allentown for much of my medical care, Pennsburg for the rest. Before the, inter the automobile, getting to Allentown would probably take about a whole day. Now we can drive hundreds of miles in a single day, cross the entire continent in about seven hours by ear. Yes, I would rather be a middle class American today than a king in past centuries. So it is hard for me to grasp the vulnerability little children faced in Jesus' day. I'm 65 and cancer does make me very aware of my mortality. However, I face this vulnerability as a mature adult, not as a little child. That hymn that is beloved to us, Jesus loved me, this I know, was written in the 19th century for a sick child. Our culture encourages us to both push away from our consciousness the reality of our vulnerabilities that we do face. However, when we do face these vulnerabilities, both personal and global, that is when we are able to receive the kingdom of God as a child. It is exactly our vulnerabilities that remind us that we are not invincible, small g, gods. We depend on God. This is ultimately true for all of us. However, when we can, through prayer and reflection, become aware of our limitations in 
and vulnerabilities. It is exactly at that time that we open ourselves to being present with God each and every day. This willingness to face our ultimate vulnerability and to be vulnerable to each other in our personal lives is vital. This willingness, this ability, is what brings us before God like little children. And when we come before God as little children, we are able to enter God's kingdom. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us be in a time of prayer. Gracious God, we lift in our prayers this morning. Catherine, Stephen, Marvin, Audrey, Jim, Stephanie, Chris, Kristen, Susie, Dawn, Bill, Bill, David, and Catherine myself. We ask there, God, that you might pour upon each of these people your healing power, that you might surround them in your loving presence and bring them into your wholeness. We lift in our prayers those who are grieving. The students at Emmaus and, and faculty at Emmaus High School who are grieving the loss of a student to a car accident the end of October. The Batista family, the Leibensberger family. We ask that you might be with them in their time of grief. and Let them know that nothing in all creation separates any one of us from your love for us through Jesus Christ. We hold David and Catherine in our prayers and we ask that they might be able to recover soon from their losses. We hold them in our prayers and we hope and we pray that they might be able to get through this fire 
and that they might be able to get back on their feet quickly. We lift in our prayers William, who I missed here, different line. We ask that you might be with us as we enter in this time of waiting, this time of Advent. We ask that you might help us through these next several weeks to keep a Christian presence when somebody cuts us in line when we've been waiting to our turn. We ask that you might help us in all the hustle and bustle that comes with this month, that we might be centered and kept strong, that we might be reminded that the season of Christmas actually starts on the 24th of December and not on Halloween. <laughs> and that we might be so centered to rejoice that God so loved us that he gave to us a son that all who believed in him may not perish but have everlasting life. And we prepare in Advent for this great gift given to us. We ask that we might be worthy of that gift and that we might share that gift with others. These prayers, the prayers of our hearts, we lift up to you, dear God, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray according to the bulletin. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and grace. We give you thanks, Holy One, almighty and eternal God, always and everywhere, through Jesus Christ, the only one begotten by you before all time, by whom you made the world and all things. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and for calling us to be your people. Although we rebelled against your love, you did not abandon us in our sin, but sent us prophets and teachers to lead us into the way of salvation. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, our only Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In the fullness of time, you came to us and received our nature in the person of Jesus, who in obedience to you by suffering on the cross and being raised from the dead, delivered us from the way of sin and death, we praise you that Jesus now reigns with you in glory and lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us to truth, defends us in adversity, and gathers us to unite in one holy church. Therefore, we worship and glorify you, God most holy. We remember on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered the disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to you, broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives committed to your service on behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout our lives that we may know you as the Holy One, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ has died and was raised for you. body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. Amen.
cup of salvation poured out for you. Take and drink. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Invite I invite Marty to come forward. Commission to serve. Back to the bulletin. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbors as ourselves. We love one another as Jesus loves us. We make disciples by teaching and modeling how to follow Jesus' way of love. Please stand for the benediction. <clears throat> May God strengthen us to the end. Christ draw near to our gates and the Holy Spirit Awaken our spirits until, with eager longing, we greet the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks. Stand as you are able, and we will sing hymn number, 200, or number 26, Prepare the Royal Highway. Mm -hmm. 